Howell, I'd like you to respond to this video or if you can interview him, that would be great. He is adamant about waiting until after Biden is elected to then push him to the left. So I was intrigued. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. I'm going to talk on Kamala Harris being Biden's chosen VP. The answer is I'm really not. Um, I called this months ago. It seemed like the most likely option to me. Um, uh, uh, Warren would, was a pipe dream. Uh, obviously, Bernie wasn't going to happen because uh, Biden committed to having a female VP. Really, the worst choice would have been Klobuchar. Um, see, you all are complaining now with uh, with Kamala Harris, but if it had been Klobuchar, we would all be organizing suicide packs right now, just to, to keep everything in, the, you know, in, in context. Um, I don't have much to say about it. Obviously, Kamala... So he's not really an apologist for Kamala. He's just saying that she's better than Amy Klobuchar, lesser evil. I forgot to point out here that he likes Elizabeth Warren, which shows you clearly that he's a sheepdog. Norman Solomon also likes Elizabeth Warren, and Elizabeth Warren is absolutely not a progressive. I wasn't instantly alarmed by this guy. I checked him out a little bit. I found out that he thinks he's a leftist. And like Cenk Uger, he does come at things mostly from the left perspective. And also like Cenk Uger, he says some things that are deeply disturbing if your career is sniffing out sheepdogs. Spoiler alert, this guy is the biggest sheepdog out there. His name is Vosh, I guess, Vosh. He has 202,000 subscribers. This little video got 87,221 views. One thing you know right away is that like Cenk Uger, somehow he got funded or somehow he got around the YouTube censors. For whatever reason, they don't consider him to be an existential threat and they've even elevated him somewhat with their algorithms and their other treatment of him. He has as many followers as what YouTube would call an authoritative source. If you're really hell-bent on disrupting the system, YouTube seems to figure it out pretty quickly. And what Bernie understands is though he may not be president, he may not even be running for president anymore, he is now staring down the barrel of the most conceivably progressive Democratic Party ticket in the history of this country. So here, just quickly, we'll go, we'll go through a few of his points. He thinks that Bernie's platform is going to actually lead to any kind of help for the American worker. He thinks that Congress is actually going to do something to help workers because of Bernie's platform. Another spoiler alert. I know this guy is too smart to actually think what he's saying. It took me all of 30 seconds to realize that he doesn't believe most of what he's telling you. Ask Bernie Sanders, the guy who dedicated his life to an optics project that ended up winning over millions. Don't ask Kamala Harris is a Steve Mnook whose myopic, short-sighted approach to electoral politics would see us dead who would see us uh, completely politically irrelevant. That's what you need to do. You need to follow in that example. You need to make socialism look good and then bend the knee when it's time to bend the knee. Because this is the problem the left has every time. The left throws their hands up. It's time! But it's not time. We got something. You don't have anything. Bernie lost. So now he's out where everybody can see him. At a time when we should be pushing, he's saying, no, you don't have anything. It's not time yet. Just wait. You'll be fine. Try to look good to the DNC. Maybe they'll throw you a few bones. I'd rather win a few concessions than throw away all of Bernie's hard-won political capital. Bernie doesn't have any political capital. Bernie will be ignored just like the left has been ignored for the last 40 plus years. What we need to do right now is fuck shit up. And this guy knows it. And he's doing everything he can to calm us down. I'll let you watch the rest if you want to. I'll link to it in my information section. But the point is that he's a sheepdog and we need to figure out how to spot them and then what we should say to them after we spot them.
This is how I responded. Yeah, he's a twat. I'll debate him anytime he likes. He thinks that the DNC cares if people vote for them. He's either an idiot or a controlled opposition sheepdog. It's not always easy to tell them apart. We can't move the Democratic Party left unless we, number one, pay them more than the billionaire donors pay them, or number two, strike and riot until they have to listen. We either need to primary every single corporate Dem, or we need to start over with a new party. He thinks playing hardball is throwing away goodwill. So he hates Bernie or Bust. He hates the people who are trying to use leverage against the DNC. And I say that would assume that we could ever have good faith discussions with corporatists such as Nancy Pelosi. Ain't gonna happen. He wants to appease and make deals when we need to seize the moment and start blowing shit up. He couldn't possibly be more out of touch with what actually needs to happen now unless he were working directly for the plutocrats. Oh wait, how many subscribers does he have? How much revenue does his channel generate? Is it possible that the powers favor him in the same way they favor Cenk and Anna? We know who is paying them, Jeffrey Katzenberg. It should ring alarm bells that this guy is ranting his ass off and telling us exactly what the oligarchs want us to hear. He tells us to work within the system. He tells us to be smart. He isn't telling us to blow shit up. That's a dead giveaway. I perceive him as way too smart not to know this. He will continue to get paid to sound smart and condescending, which is a sign that he's part of the DNC because they all sound condescending. This guy doesn't sound like he gives an actual fuck about US workers. It sounds more like he gives an actual fuck about sounding smart and condescending. So back to my comment, he will continue to get paid to sound smart and condescending and persuade as many reasonable, comfy Dems as possible that the Bernie or Bust crowd is petulant and unreasonable. Think about it. He sounds genuinely alarmed that the true burners are not caving in and voting Biden. And this guy's not the only one. Lots of people are losing their shit now because Bernie people are not coming around and bending the knee to the Biden-Harris camp. If he's working for the enemy, that's probably a good sign that he's genuinely alarmed that the true burners are not caving in and voting Biden. There's no point in making ourselves look good. He says we should work on our political capital. We should work on the goodwill we have that Bernie has generated with the DNC. Fuck that shit. Our only hope is if we can make a Frederick Douglass type demand. Who cares if we look good? Who cares if we are perceived as reasonable? We need to take no prisoners. We need to demand that people we vote into office with our hard-won small-dollar donations don't start sucking up to the powerful Dems who run committees. Again, this guy is saying the exact opposite of what we ought to be doing, even though he probably knows exactly what we ought to be doing. I would definitely like to see his tax returns. I wonder if Jeffrey Katzenberg is paying this guy too. He thinks that purists won't win the game. He thinks that playing the game will eventually lead to winning the game. He doesn't really think that, but he's good at making people think he thinks that. He knows what incrementalists do. He knows how the swamp works. There is no pushing Biden's people to the left. His cabinet is filled with swamp creatures. This guy's central point is to bring the Bernie people into the corrupt sheepfold and keep them there meek and compliant. He speaks forcefully to us sheep, but don't be swayed. His tactics only work on the weak-minded, although I admit he has lots of weak-minded subscribers. He says he wants to win as a socialist by infiltrating the DNC, while he simultaneously admits that the DNC will never be a socialist party. Right there, that tells you he knows what's really going to happen. Absolutely nothing for the people and everything for the donors. This is the comment I left for him under his video. You are a slippery, slimy sheepdog. You know exactly what you are doing. We are at a point in history where looking good and playing the game is the exact opposite of what we should be doing. We need to blow shit up, and we need to do it right now. 
You know this. It's not a coincidence that you and Noam Chomsky, Cenk Uger, Norman Solomon, Sean King, Michael Moore, and all the other paid sheepdogs are telling us to do exactly what the corrupt DNC wants us to do. This is what the CIA, Hollywood, and the rest of the military intelligence complex also wants us to do. What we actually need to do is strike and riot. We need to make demands. Don't pretend that we can win the game by playing along. You say you want to win as a socialist by infiltrating the DNC while simultaneously admitting that the DNC will never be a socialist party. That shows that you know what's really going to happen. Absolutely nothing for the people and everything for the donors. Playing along has achieved exactly nothing for the working poor over the last 40 plus years of neoliberal rule. I would really love to see your tax returns. You reek of the stench of controlled opposition. So it's bad enough that we have to deal with MSDNC and CNN and the Washington Post and the New York Times. We also have to deal with independent, independent media on the left or who are supposedly on the left. David Dole is another example. Cenk Uger I've already mentioned. These guys aren't really leftists if they're telling you to vote for corporatists. It's that simple. If they're saying to vote for Joe Biden or Hillary Rodham Clinton, they're not leftists. And why would a leftist who knows better tell you to do that unless somebody was paying them to tell you that or trading influence or some other commodity that YouTubers might be interested in? This guy is shady as fuck and we need to call him out and we need to call out all the other sheepdogs too. Sheepdog hunting needs to become our new favorite sport.